We're going to talk emergency food storage, making sure that we are prepared for whatever happens. Emergency food storage. It's not a good idea. It's, it's essential that we have food on hand. Uh, you know, I think that many of us took those things for granted until recently. Uh, but I think the pandemic really gave a uh, shown a, a light on some of our uh, our ill preparedness in our homes. And uh, we want to talk about food storage, how much emergency food storage you need, um, and then a system for that storage. It's something that uh, is very hot in the prepper world. And just really, as we begin to look at um, that prepper world, we, we do a lot of, uh, of stuff, especially on YouTube, about growing your own food, on Instagram, about growing your own food, um, that homesteading life. But really, a more complete way um, to, to look at prepping or to look at homesteading is to merge those things together um, into really a, a prep steading atmosphere. Um, kind of a, a way that we need to look at that because we can grow our own food, but how many of you know that the inevitable or, or the, uh, uh, the extreme can happen? You can get to almost harvest time. A hailstorm can wipe out your harvest. A drought can keep you from being able to have a harvest. So we need to be able to make sure that we're able to bridge the gap in those lean times. So that's why we need to uh, take those principles of prepping as well as those principles of homesteading and marry those things together. Um, and tonight I want to talk about something from the prepping world, and that is um, emergency food storage. Um, if you have a question at any time, you can drop it in the comments and we want to interact and, and answer any questions that you have. So the biggest question that I get asked is how much food do I need to have on hand? And that is an absolutely impossible, um, but that's an impossible answer to give without some data. Um, some of the data that we need to do that we need in order to make those decisions or to be able to give you that answer is um, how many people live in your home? How many people are you planning um, to prepare for? How many how many people are going to be there um, if uh, if the crap really hits the fan, if things were if the supply chains were to break, if so on and so forth. And then there's some calculations that have to be done uh, based on the caloric needs of those people, male, female, age, um, all of those things um, come into consideration when, uh, when you start talking about how much food you need to have on hand. So let me give a broad answer. Um, you need to start where you are right now and you need to begin to increase your food stores. No matter what those food stores are, you need to begin to increase those food stores. Um, we have a, a free resource, a tool that you can use. Um, all the things that I'm talking about today um, in, in the live today, um, you can find them over um, at prepared to live slash live, prepared to live dot com slash live, prepared to live dot com slash live live. Uh, from now on, all the lives that we do, um, you're going to be able to go to that link and we'll link all the stuff we're talking to talking about um, so that it's it's in one place for you to be able to get to it. Um, but we, we actually created a tool. It's an emergency food calculator. And by answering just some simple questions, it's going to give you an incredible amount of data. Now, let me go ahead and tell you this. Um, <clears throat> when you get over there and you use that tool, um, preparedtolive.com slash live, and you can link to it there, or you can go straight to it by going to preparedtolive.com slash food dash calculator. Um, but when you get there and you enter your data, I want to go ahead and be upfront with you so you don't go over there um, if you don't want to do this. And it's at the end, it's going to ask for your email address. Um, the reason we ask for your email address is twofold. Number one, the data that you see up front on that first screen is only a tiny bit of the data that you're actually going to receive. Um, 
you, you're going to get some basic caloric, um, some caloric breakdowns, uh, some poundage breakdowns. But when you enter your email, you're going to actually get um, a very detailed itemized list of how many pounds of each thing you need to store. It's not going to cost you a penny. Um, we don't sell your email address. I'm not going to spam you. I'm not going to do any of those things. Um, but um, but the reason we ask for that e email address is so that we can send you that detailed report so that you can have it, so that you can print it, so that you can put it in the place where you're storing your food. Use it as a checklist. Use it as a plan, as a design um, to be able to go from where you are to where you want to be. And then also um, because a lot of the content we do, um, it's content that social media platforms don't necessarily like. Um, we do some content around um, powder powered self-defense um, and and those things will get you banned. They'll get you uh, they'll get you shut down and um, demonetized and all of those things very quickly. So by you giving us your email address, even if we were to be taken off of the major social media platforms, we still have a way to stay in touch with you um, and send you some of the great um, tools and resources that we create and that we have and that we find. We send you a little bit of everything because we want to help you on your self-sufficiency journey. So let's dig into kind of um, that um that 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 uh, process of of food storage, um, use that tool so you have the plan and you know what you need. But beyond that, we're going to look at some essential things. Um, I do recommend um, as part of your food storage plan that you use some of the self uh, some of that self that st shelf stable food um, that you purchase um, in the buckets. Um, and simply for this reason, most of us. Not a hundred percent, but most of us, um, we we still eat some preservatives, uh, some highly processed food in our diets. Where that's just kind of the modern American diet. Um, there is a lot of that that we consume. If we were to just simply go cold turkey off of that, and go to stored foods, rice, beans, um, different grains all of those kind of things, um, we, would, we would suffer severe um, digestional, uh, digestional issues. So this shelf-stable food also has preservatives in it. It's going to be more like what we eat every day. So it's going to give your body time to adjust as you introduce one meal from your food storage, one meal um, of clean eating, um, and then you can begin to wean yourself off of those things. Um, but I think that 10% of what you uh, store should be in that shelf stable food. Um, and uh, My Patriot Supply is running a great deal right now. Um, you can go over to My Patriot Supply if you go to preparedtolive.com slash live and you click that link. Um, they will send us a very small commission, but I don't care if you do that or not. It's just there. Um, if you're going to go there and you're going to look at it, why not help us make content? Um, so um, they, they're running a special. It's $80 off of a four-week supply of food. I've never really seen a deal that good before. Um, so it's uh, my Patriot supply, a four-week supply, $80 off of that four-week supply of food, which is a pretty great deal. A and you can get that over there at my Patriot supply. So when you uh, when you look at that 10% but how do i know what my how do i know what i'm looking at you're going to look at caloric intake you're going to look at calories i'm not servings a lot of these companies will try to uh, sell you um, sell you food by the serving. They'll tell you that there are 10 servings and they count that as 10 meals but a serving is not a meal you need to hit those those base calories in order to be able to keep your body functioning, um, to be able to keep your body um, uh, to be able to keep your body um, going in process, to be able to continue to survive. Um, you know, a, a military age male is going to need a minimum of 2,200 calories a day 
um, just to be able to continue to function. And in a in, in a survival setting where we are truly trying to survive, um, probably more calories than that. So you're going to look at calories and you're going to want to hit that minimum calorie amount. Now, listen, if you want to if you want to have, um, you know, 30,000, if you want to eat 3000 calories a day, do your math based on 3000 calories a day. But you need a minimum. You, you need to strive immediately um, to try to get one month food in storage. Um, and you may think you have that, but you need to actually do some. Uh, you need to do some inventory in your pantry and things like that to make sure that you actually have that much food on hand. So when you are talking about food storage and what those things look like, the easiest place to get calories is going to be your basic um, dried beans and grains, uh, including pasta. Each one of those things is going to have right around 1,600 calories per pound, 1,600 calories per pound. So as you begin to do that math, then you can see what a month's worth of food is going to uh, is going to look like. You, when you when you buy these, I, we buy them in bulk and we store them um, in mylar bags um, inside five gallon buckets. So we take the mylar bag, put it inside a five gallon bucket. We fill it up with those dried beans, rice dried pastas, grains, um, whatever, whatever that's it's there, whatever it needs. Um, and then we place oxygen absorbers, uh, food grade diatomaceous earth, which will take care of any insects, any larva that may already be in the food. Now, listen, I know that sounds gross, um, but there is, there is uh, insect larva in, in a lot of dried goods, in dried beans, in rices, in those kind of things. So, um, so putting that diatomaceous earth in will guarantee that when you open your food, um, and listen, this stuff, when you're talking about dried beans, rice, pasta, inside a mylar bag with oxygen absorbers, you're talking about a 20 to 25 year shelf life on this food. When you uh, when you see that, um, that that this food lasts 25 years, you don't want to open that bucket and think that you have enough food only to realize um, that bugs have gotten into it. So that's what the diatomaceous earth does. So you put the diatomaceous earth and then you seal the buckets. Um, one bucket with rice holds about 30 pounds of rice. Uh, beans, you're probably going to get not quite 30 pounds of beans in a bucket but you're going to begin to store those things. And then right on the outside, and this is kind of the system we use, a white bucket is rice or pasta. A blue bucket, some type of bean. Yellow, corn or cornmeal. Red is um, going to be wheat or flour. Green, any other grain. Black is medical supplies. Um, could be gauze, bandages, whatever. And then orange is going to be salt, sugar, spices, things like that. So when you begin to to store these things, um, you put your you put your your rice in a white bucket, but there's all kinds of different rice. We, we, we store all kinds of different rices and we write what kind of rice it is on the outside of the bucket. The same with beans. What kind of beans is it? With corn, if it's popcorn, goes in a yellow bucket. If it's field corn, goes in a yellow bucket. So it doesn't matter um, that corn is in a yellow bucket. Then we write what kind of corn it is on a label on the outside so that we know exactly what's on the inside. A green bucket could have quinoa. Um, it could have barley. It could have oats. It could have any of those things on the inside of that green bucket. So it's a green bucket. We know that it's a grain. We write that on the outside. But that's not the only food storage. That's the system we use for our dried goods. But there's also canned goods. Um, canned goods are also an excellent way to store food for lean times when maybe um, you're not producing, uh, your garden is not producing what you want it to produce. If you have a question about anything that we're talking about, you can drop it in the comments um, just right there at any time. We want to interact and answer any questions you may have about food storage. So. 
when we when we begin to to think about canned goods, that's a little more natural for us. That's something that that we deal with um, every day. And you need a rotation schedule when it comes to your canned goods. Uh, first in, first out. So your oldest cans you need to use first. Um, there are all kinds of different organizational systems. Um, we use something by a company called Thrive. And uh, basically, you load the cans in the top, they roll down, and as you take the can out, it just keeps cycling through. When you get ready to go to the grocery store, you just count the empty slots, and then you buy that many so you know that you always have at least a dozen of each one of those cans on hand. Um, and that's the way we do it. And we use that as in a working pantry. So our, a lot of our stored canned foods is in a working pantry. So it's just shelves lined with these things and the canned food goes on there. And inside those canned foods, there's some canned vegetables. And I'm talking about just like regular size cans, um, soups, uh, canned pastas, canned meats, uh, canned fruits, all of those things. Um, so basically, um, we just make sure that we always have the same amount on hand. We don't use everything and then go and try to buy everything again. We have built up this store, this surplus. And then as we take a can out, um, if we use one can of green beans, if we use three cans of Chef Boyardee and four cans of um, chicken noodle soup, we go and we buy that many cans at the grocery store when we go to the grocery store for the week. Um, so if anything were to happen, if supply chains were to break, if all of those things um, were to happen, then what we can do um, is what we know for sure, how many canned goods we have on hand at all times and what the caloric, um, the, the caloric, the total calories in those cans are. So we always know what's in our working pantry. Um, sugars and salts and spices um, are something that you must have on hand. And then also, of course, there's freezer food. Now, I know a lot of people, and this is this is a hot topic in the prepper world, people say don't count freezer food because if the power goes out, if the grid goes down. But the reality is if the grid goes down, um, you still have some time um, to consume that food that's in your freezer. Uh, when the power goes down, your freezer temperature is not going to shoot up to 70 degrees overnight. As long as you keep the lids down and as long as things are frozen, um, it's going to maintain a cold temperature. But what you would do in the case of um, total systemic collapse, uh, you know, we're talking zombie apocalypse or whatever. Um, you know, that's um, if that were to happen, you're going to eat the food out of your freezer first. And as things begin to thaw, you're going to quickly prepare that food, cook that food, because cooked food um, will last longer than raw food. So you're going to cook that food. You're going to dehydrate that food. So if you got a dehydrator, you're going to dehydrate that food. You're going to turn it into a biltong. You're going to do whatever you need to do um, in order um, to uh, in order to keep that 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 food because those are calories that you're going to need. So you're going to consume that first. Those things out of your freezer. Now, digging in um, into that freezer every time you open the door, you're exposing it to warm air. So it, it, you, you need to do those things quickly. But that is still a valid way to store food. If you have a generator, you don't have to run your generator 24 hours a day to keep your food uh, to keep your food frozen. You only need to run that generator a few hours each day in order to keep your food uh, frozen. So if you just were able to uh, to uh, hey Dave, good to see you, man. Um, so if you were to just run your your generator just a couple of hours every day and pull the temperature down on your freezer, your food is going to stay frozen and okay. So having food storage that's frozen is okay. Now, do you want all of your food in, in the freezer? Of course not. Uh, but but having some there is completely fine. It's a viable way um, to to store food. Now remember, storing food is not the only way that we're going to prepare. We also want to grow our own food. 
Um, and as we do that, as we work through that and we grow our own food, then we're adding back to our food stores. Now, when we when we are transitioning past that and we're thinking about meat, a lot of times we think that the freezer is the only way to store meat, but it's simply not. Um, we can also uh, we can also uh, can meat. That's a valid way to to, to preserve meat as well. Um, and canned meat, I'm talking about in jars, just like you can corn and green beans and all those things. It's a valid way to store meat. And we do, and we do can some meat. Um, you have to do that at, at pressure. Um, you have to use a pressure canner in order to do that, but um, it's a great way. And then listen, it, you're, you're running late. You forgot to put something out for supper instead of trying to thaw some some stuff out in the freezer, put it in the microwave and it gets all junky, just grab a can, make a soup or a stew out of it or get a sauce and put it over some rice. It's a great way um, to have just food on hand as well. So food storage is a very, very important thing that we have. And our goal immediately needs to be at least one month. But jump over and get that emergency food calculator. You can get that by going to, to uh, preparedtolive.com slash live. And you're going to get the links to all the resources and everything that we've talked about right there um, at preparedtolive.com slash live at that food calculator. Um, it's a free resource. Um, avail yourself of that. We will also be offering a, a caloric density PDF um, in the next few days to go along with that. Uh, so that's something you want to grab. And listen, if you go ahead and use the calculator, we're going to send you um, that PDF when it's ready to go. So make sure that you're jumping over there and grabbing that um, and, and using that because that is a plan that you can put in place. It's a blueprint, a framework um, of a plan for you to be able to make sure that you have the food storage that you need. Now, you, you want to store these things in cool, dark places, if at all possible, something like a root cellar. Listen, our grandparents and great-grandparents, they used root cellars most of their lives. They, they didn't refrigerate everything, they and they lived. They made it. I, we, we have become um, totally dependent on refrigeration, and we don't have to be totally dependent on refrigeration. There are other ways to keep food safe, um, to, to preserve food. So in all of that, um, I, I, we've got those resources for you. Uh, thank you for joining me this evening as we've talked about food storage. If you have any questions, um, you can drop them in the comments of this video, even in its archived form, and we'll answer them for you. Or you can always send us an email at info at preparedtolive.net, preparedtolive.net, not .com, preparedtolive.net. So thank you, and um, until next time. Um, we're just growing and learning with you. Have a good night.